Today's monstrously messy Macintosh monitor shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Well, it's winter here in Pennsylvania, and that means two things. One, desperately trying to fix the broken heater in my car. Dag nabbit. And two, reuniting with old friends over the holidays. So what better time to reunite with this old friend, an obscenely upgraded Macintosh SE30 in a clear case. This thing has lived quite the life so far, and today, we're giving it what might just be its final ridiculous upgrade. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the thought of performing every conceivable upgrade on obsolete computers, no matter the personal and financial toll, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This weird, transparent, compact Macintosh might need a bit of an explanation. We last saw this machine back in October 2021, where I swapped its somewhat melted and painted black original case for this cool, transparent Mac Effects case. And we dremeled the front of it out to accommodate the slot-loading CD-ROM drive. Because of course, this has a slot-loading CD-ROM drive. Why wouldn't it? But it goes back way further than that. I originally picked this thing up from Craigslist in mid-2020, based on a few blurry pics of an unidentifiable compact Mac that was painted black and had a blue tray-loading CD-ROM drive hacked into the front of it. When I got it home, we tore it open and found that it started life as a Macintosh SE30. You know, one of these friendly beige fellows which is a 68030-based compact Mac with a reputation for being the most upgradable compact Mac Apple ever produced. However, the original owner of this thing decided that a beige case and a floppy drive just won't cut it. So they hacked up the case to fit a CD-ROM drive and wired in a bunch of random speakers and glued them inside the case. This case right here, in fact. And in a shocking twist on the saga, the original owner who did these mods back in the 90s found the series of videos and commented and emailed me a bunch of pictures from his college days from back when he originally modded this thing. I'll link to the start of the saga right here, but be warned, old videos, poor production quality, and I was just a wacky waving arm on camera back then. Well, in the years since finding this thing, I've been on a quest to make it the ultimate expression of the original modder's vision. And to give it every conceivable upgrade. I've hacked in a modern power supply, a new sound amplifier, it has a custom-built 68040 accelerator from our friend Bull in Germany. And of course, this beautiful clear case from Mac Effects. And the ever-important tasteful RGB. Well, there's one upgrade slot still open. In fact, it's the pass-through slot for the PDS connector on top of Bull's upgrade card. And I've been saving a very special upgrade for quite some time. Because the only thing that can make this compact Mac better is turning it into a dual-screen battle station, which uh, I'm pretty sure is gonna be possible. This is a Radius Pivot 030 graphics card graciously donated to the channel over a year ago. This thing is meant to power the holy grail of CRT monitors, the Radius Pivot rotating display. But in absence of that amazing monitor, this should still work, I think, for a regular colored display. But I think we're gonna have some challenges getting this thing installed and working in this machine, which we'll talk about right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website dedicated to the pure joy of using a computer with a one-bit black and white display. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but it would be well-designed, responsive, and mobile-friendly. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. 
And from there, it's simple to create a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on any device. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So there's actually three problems that I'm seeing right off the bat. First is that I have no idea what resolutions and color depths this thing will support on just a standard Sony Trinitron monitor. I didn't find anything in a brief online search except for, well, actually a few people claiming adamantly that this won't work at all. But I think it'll be fun to just send it and find out together. Second, there's no space to put a second backing plate with the connector on the back of this machine. Since we already have one for ethernet, we could tap into the other port on Bull's card, but that would require some hacking and soldering. And there's no way I'm gonna hack up this original radius backplate and cable. And third, well, I actually very briefly tried to install this graphics card ages ago and it didn't quite work. Well, it started to work, but it would freeze or show garbled nonsense on boot. But I've since learned the reason behind why it wasn't working right. And we're gonna try the fix together. Just look at all of the beautiful upgrades in this thing. Up top here is the 68040 upgrade card, the Carrera 040 clone made by Bull and its cash card. And that is connected to Bull's riser card here, which also includes an integrated ethernet controller. And yeah, this here is the pass through slot, which is going to hold our video card. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Just look at that. Just a huge tower of interconnected upgrade cards powering this wacky machine. <laughs> but we're gonna have to take these cards out. Ugh. Always so worried taking this back apart. This is actually very annoying to disassemble because I used random screws based on what would fit. <laughs> So let's take a look at these two upgrade cards here because this is a very special card made by Bull, which is both the riser, which is what you used to have to use on these machines to put this Carrera card on, the original, but he also integrated the ethernet controller in here. But there's a very special feature which I didn't know about until I asked Bull, and that is back here an anti-blunder switch. And what that does is prevent you from cooking your one-of-a-kind upgrade card because this card only works plugged into this port here, but it fits on this port here. And if you do that, it will fry the card. Well, except on here because he's broken the connection that would fry the card otherwise. So all we have to do to make this port work correctly with the video card is bridge this anti-blunder switch there so that we are fully blunder enabled. And then we just obviously make sure that we never ever plug this card in here. All right, through the cunning use of a big old blob of solder, I have connected those two pads and yeah, this should work with that video card now. Let's pop it in the Mac and find out. So the one problem that we're gonna have is the video port here because this ethernet card is taking up the only expansion slot in the back. 
So there is a way to hijack this port for this video, but that would require creating some sort of adapter internally to not damage this, or I could recreate this connector with just individual wires, which is an option. But for now, just to test it, <laughs> tried and true method of dangling it off the back. Okay, I have this glorious Sony Trinitron Multiscan 200 SF hooked up to the Mac with a VGA adapter set to 640 by 480. Let's power this on and see what happens. <laughs> Got the sad Mac on here. Okay, so as a control, I've taken out the bowl upgrade stuff and I have it booting up with just the card. And that seems to be working fine. So for some reason, it doesn't like the bowl upgrade. Hey, look at that. The mouse can go between the screens just like a modern computer. <laughs> okay, come on, just how cool is that? <laughs> Dragging windows back and forth, going from color to one bit black and white. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's dog slow without the 040 upgrade in there, but it's cool. All right, well, even though we don't have a full speed machine yet, I really wanna try the number one reason I wanted to put this card in this Mac. Wolfenstein 3D, because you can't play that in one bit black and white. You need color. Wolfenstein 3D might run slowly on a 68030. That's fine. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, it's going to be unplayably slow, though, without the O40. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty unplayably slow. I'm using this silly next keyboard, and the keys are in weird places. <laughs> Controls all the way up there. <laughs> all right, so check this out. Through the clever use of wildly guessing, I have figured out the correct combination for these two jumpers here to resolve whatever conflict this card had with the graphics card. So now, check this out. That's right, we are now booting with everything installed. We have the graphics card, the extender card with the ethernet built in, and critically, the 68040 processor upgrade. And here it is, it's alive. Oh man, that feels so much faster with the 040 card activated which you can see from the little F in the corner here. Let's try to move it between displays. <laughs> uh, it's so weird going from color to pure black and white. <laughs> oh man, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's make sure that we're still getting ethernet. Oh yeah, good old frogfind.com. Oh, look, it's half in color and half in black and white. Ah, ridiculous. Totally normal computing. Okay, so the big thing, of course, is what's the Wolf 3D experience like? So on the 68040, it should be much, much improved versus the 68030. And there's still little weird distortions in the image. Just like crackling little wisps of white. Okay, I've set the movement controls to WASD and I've made the shoot button the goofy next command key. So let's see how that works out. It's uh, still not great, but much better than the O30. Shooting with that button is funny. <laughs> All right, let's increase our resolution here, which I don't have high hopes for actually, after seeing what that's like. Oh. Oh no. Well, this game is notoriously 
poorly optimized for Macintosh. So even with 128 megs of RAM and a 68040 upgrade card, we're still stuck at 320 by 200, but at least that resolution is playable and quite fast. I have one other thing I want to try though. I want to try a real Apple display to see if that fixes any of the flickering issues and if it behaves just a little more nicely. All right, well here is a very nice Apple multiple scan 15 and uh, similar issues. There's some flickering up in the corners here. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's a symptom of all the crazy stuff in this machine that it's not a perfectly stable image. It actually seems a little bit worse on this display. All right, well, this fancy ISO LCD from 2001 has no qualms about displaying this image flicker free. <laughs> actually, it's quite beautiful on here, zoomed in to fit on the screen. This LCD does a great job at zooming in 640 by 480. It's actually kind of incredible. Well, it is quite cool running a black and white compact Mac with a dual display color monitor and running things that this could never actually run on its own. Granted, even with the 040, frame rates aren't that great. But I'm so excited to have that card and to be able to install it in this SE30. That's right, this radius pivot card is gonna live in the other SE30, because when I said that graphics card was the final upgrade for this cursed Mac, that was before I located another graphics card, an incredibly special and impossible to find graphics card, and it's on its way here right now from Germany. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, because yeah, this is gonna be the ultimate upgraded compact Mac. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Rut K Mods, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.